I had wanted one of those fancy knife makers belt grinders for years, but I just couldn't put the money together to get it. Oh sure, I can make knives with files, bevel quarter inch plate with a screwdriver, but that was getting old fast. I did what any engineer with a welder would do. I decided to hack one together for myself. I had picked up a one and a half horsepower motor a little while back with just a project like this in mind. It may not have been the perfect solution. It wasn't sealed, for instance. It ran a little fast. And it was just a single phase 3450 RPM version. But it would spin a belt, and that belt would remove some material. Now, if you wanted to go fancy here, you could go with a DC motor or a three phase motor with a uh, variable frequency drive, something that gives you speed control. And uh, that's what you get with the really high end ones as well, you know. But uh, this was supposed to be a budget build, so we'll go with what we've got. And along those lines, I wasn't going to get too fancy here either. Uh, general fabrication approach stick two pieces of metal together with a welder. MIG welder, cheap one, wire feed, uh, bolt together where it makes sense to, and just get it done as reasonably quick as possible. So I opted just for a steel plate base with an upright structure that was welded together and bolting the two together. Now I was fortunate. I didn't have to buy wheels because I have a lathe. And this project was as much about the building as it was the outcomes. So a chance to fool around on my lathe and make a few parts, well, that was all the invitation I needed. Now the surface finish was good at the start, but you can see wear and tear, grit, all the use from the backs of the belts on these. They don't look very good for very long, so I probably fussed about nothing. Uh, this wheel here, the uh, tensioner wheel is crowned um, slightly on the lathe. And also the drive wheel here, back on the motor is crowned, you know, just to help with belt alignment, and it's pretty hard for the belt to come off actually with both these crowned. Now the general construction here is really straightforward, you know, I notched out one piece of tubing, ran a bolt through as a pivot, welded on a couple spots for a spring to attach, um, just simple uh, telescopic tubing here, a couple bolts with knobs on them in the side to tension it up. I mean this is as simple as it gets in my mind, and you know, it just goes to show you that you don't really need fancy in order to do the basics here. Pretty straightforward to get the belt off too. Just push down on the uh, tension arm, stretch the spring a little bit, extension spring there, and uh, slip the belt right off. That's a 60 grit ceramic blaze belt there. You can see this is super simple, right? Some guys like to use gas struts and stuff. Um, not sure if I like that answer, but I, I could see how you know it would work. Um, for mine, again, simplicity ruled out here, and I just went with the spring. There are a million ways to put tilt adjustment on this. This is how I ended up doing it. Um, by no means do I think this is the most elegant. It was simple. Um, I think I could probably still be simpler with a little bit of thought into it. I probably could have spent some time designing this, you know, rather than this was just again hacked together. I didn't really uh, sit down and draw it out or anything like that. I just started adding pieces, you know. Um, anyway, it, it does the job. It works well. Uh, it could be cleaner. Taking a look at the front end here, a piece of half inch aluminum plate um, slotted by hand with files and drills, you know, nothing fancy, no mill or rotary table or anything like that here. And, um, you know, it just does the job fine. A piece of angle iron is my platen. Having the luxury of a lathe, uh, I made my own bolts and hardware here, so, you know, nylock nut here on this side. Actually, the uh, axle is a pressed-in uh, interference fit with the aluminum plate and a uh, machine spacer in between there. And, you know, I ended up with a double nut on the end, which is not very elegant. I probably should have just done a snap ring or something like that. But here's a better look at it. I think, you know, a shoulder bolt or something like that would make a really good solution, but um, and you can buy those off the shelf. You don't have to make something in order for this to work really well. Keep it simple, stupid. Couple holes, couple bolts, couple nylocks. Yeah, you can buy seamless telescopic tubing at five or six times the price, at least in my area. 
Um, I had to go simpler, so a couple shims plug welded on there ended up being what I needed. So let's put the belt on this baby and fire it up here. See how I can uh, just sort of slide this in. You know, it's a bit tight, but he's not lock it down. It sits fairly straight and um, pretty easy. Let's see if I can do this belt without getting in the way of the camera here. It's definitely a two-handed operation. I could probably make it a little better by putting a handle onto the tension arm too and um, not having to reach quite as far. Adjust the uh, angle. Just check the tracking. Away we go. And let's take a look at the end here. Well, not the straightest grind I've ever made, but I wasn't really paying that much attention to that. Just removing some material here. The ceramic belt that's on there has been on there for quite some time. It's seen better days for sure. A fresh belt uh, will just rip. And just to confirm the size of this, because it's sometimes hard to tell, it's half inch thick by one inch wide. Pretty heavy. Let's try one more time. Yeah, so 12 seconds of grinding there, um, pretty much took the end of that right off. Again, this is a worn out belt. Um, surface finish is pretty good for 60 grit. Can't complain. Um, yeah, really effective tool. So for those of you that are in a position like I was, wondering how much I'd use this, you know, I'm not a knife maker. Um, just a general metal worker, fabricator kind of person. Uh, I use this a ton now. It's become one of the, my favorite tools in my entire workshop, and I can't imagine not having it. So get out there, put one together. You see here it's not that hard. You can just buy the wheels, weld some sticks of steel together, and away you go. Don't overthink it. Just get one of these in your shop. If you like this type of content, please subscribe. I will be trying to produce videos like this every single week. See you later.